This is an Ekman Fine Art project lesson. Patty's flowers, daisies, and butterflies. Ekman Fine Art project lessons are for learning acid-free, fine art cast paper sculpture using the Ekman method. To order, go to ekmanfineart.com. Learn Ekman method. Hi, I'm Patty Ekman from Ekman Fine Art. I just finished this daisy sculpture using the Patty's Flowers, Daisies and Butterflies kit. We're going to show you step by step how you can make one too. Okay, let's get started. Patty opens the tool bag to her kit. That's the Tuck Tool Burnisher, which you'll use throughout the project. It's my invention. And she sets up the drying stand and shows you how to use it. And there's the sculpture stand and a little peg that goes in there that you'll use to sculpt with. This is the deluxe kit with all the tools and and then uh, the bonding agent and the casts and the templates here. This is basically a basic kit that she's going through. If you've done any of the other projects that we've produced, you may have those tools that was in the tool bag. And there's a backboard. That's acid free. And this is your paper, number three sheet, just a strip of it. And these are the casts, your cast sheet with your flowers and your petals and your butterflies on there. And last, there's a little paper chip in there that you'll use for the legs of your butterflies. Now let's make that bonding agent. Add a quarter cup of water to a pot on the stove. When it comes to a boil, add the powder that's in the kit. You'll want to mix the powder thoroughly. Here Patty's using a whisk to do that. It turns milky. Then you'll add some ice. A couple of chunks of ice will cool this mixture. As it cools, it gets thicker. The longer it cools, the thicker it gets. You'll want to have two containers ready. Once it's thoroughly mixed and thickened, Pour the contents into one container. It'll continue to get thicker. Add half of that container to a second container. Then you'll want to add a little water to make it thinner. So you'll have a thick mixture and then you'll have a thin mixture.
your patty adds plenty of water. Now remember, you can always make your bonding agent thinner by adding water. But the only way you can make it thicker is to add some more of your thick bonding agent. Now we're ready to start rolling the stems for your daisies. Patty lays the template over that strip of paper. You could put the uh, backboard underneath that strip too. You might find that it gives you a little better impression with that under there. Patty's finding the edge of that paper. Also, you might want to tape this down. Patty's very used to doing this, so she's just going to go ahead and trace it down. The pencil goes over and around the edges of the template, making an impression on that paper, which will allow her to see and then she can cut that out. This stair step stem is the main stem and then the one over top of that is a stem that you will segment and by cutting it and placing it onto the larger stem. We'll show you how to do that later. But first we're going to roll these stems. There she has found the indentation on the large stem. And she cuts that out carefully. Those stair steps will reveal places on the stem where the smaller stems will branch out from. You notice that the paper has a torn edge, which is the edge of this template that she's cutting out, and the decal edge, which is a little more ragged. That decal edge is good to tear pieces off when you go into sculpting, it'll feather in really nicely. The harder edge is okay. We don't worry about that, but you'll be able to burnish it down. Okay, so now there's her her two pieces that she's going to roll. She takes one of the wires and she wets that end that is torn with the bonding agent. This bonding agent is your wetter bonding agent. You're thinner. It'll soak in. We're going to show you two ways to roll. I like rolling from the top. Patty likes rolling from the bottom, but she's going to roll this one from the top and that will allow you to see the two ways. It doesn't matter. You can do it 
the way that it's the most comfortable for you. She leaves about a quarter of an inch of paper just above that wire. And then she folds the paper with the tuck tool burnisher, the metal end, over that wire and tucks it underneath. And then she runs the burnisher along that edge, holds it over, tucks it under, and burnishes it in to that wire. You can see how the the black backboard that she's working on is telegraphing through. Shows how wet the paper is. Now she's just gingerly pulling it toward herself and rolling that stem out on the wire. The wire will stay in there. It's an armature. Now she's going to find where those segments are because when she burnishes that paper down on the paper underneath the edge, it sort of disappears. So she wants to make sure she can identify where those branches are going to come out for the other daisies. Now she's burnishing it. This is probably the hardest part of this project. Some people have a difficult time doing this, but if you practice and you have more paper there, if you don't like your first stem, just take it off and roll another one with the paper that you have left. She continues to burnish this and get it smooth, finding that segment at the top. You'll have a fat side there and a thin side. Of course, the fat side's the one that's going to go into your sculpture stand in that tube. Now she's going to roll the other stems, these will be a little thinner. And again, she's going to just apply that bonding agent to that strip of paper, wetting it, letting it soak in. You want to make sure your surface is clean, your hands are clean. This is all acid-free paper, so wash your hands and your surfaces before you start. And here she's demonstrating how to tuck it in from the bottom, and roll it from the bottom. She's more comfortable doing this. I'm more comfortable doing it the other way. But basically, she's doing the same thing with that tuck tool burnisher, the metal end. She rolls it over the wire, tucks it underneath, runs it along the edge. And again, this, even though we're going to cut this up later, that wire will stay in there. She's going to do the roll here and also burnish it. Then she'll dry this with the other stem and move on. After it's all dry, we'll burnish it again. Do what we call dry burnishing. 
and we can use both ends of that burnisher to do this. Now she's using the wire end to burnish that down. I like to use the wooden end, but She likes to roll it like this and get it flat, making sure those edges of the paper really bond. There she's using the wooden end of her burnisher to, to burnish it down. Now she's drying it. Next, take your sheet of cast and release the the flower. You can see it's right there. She's going to cut around those petals on the on the flower. There's four of these. And they're all done pretty much the same way. First she cuts out the flower. There's all the petals that will be added to that flower. You'll have your, that's where you're going to punch it, right there in the bottom with a, with an awl. That gives you a hole where you can attach the stem later on. And you'll want to do this now. I'm going to push an awl through there. She's got foam board underneath it make a nice hole through that cast. That paper's pretty thick, so. She makes that hole pretty big, reams it out a little bit. Now she's going to take these small fingernail scissors have a curved blades on the end of those scissors. They're handy for getting around these tight areas. And she's going to release the petals on this cast. That wedge in between the petals will be scraps. You might want to save all your scraps from your project because if you do other projects, you can repulp that in a blender, whether it's hard paper or soft paper, and it's useful when you get into doing other projects. If you follow us on YouTube with some of the more advanced projects, you'll see how we use some of that pulp that we re-blend. We don't throw away any of our paper. As long as it's clean and acid-free, we just bag it and save it. It's hard to make this paper. It's all acid-free, and we don't want to throw anything away that we can use. So you can see she's going around all of these petals. Here we'll get a little closer on the B-roll and show you how she's cutting around these petals. With those little fingernail scissors. Uh, one more of these and she'll have them all cut out. And like I said, you're going to do all of the daisies this way. Okay, there's her last one. Now she's got these little tags she folds them down. This will be scrap.
getting them out of the way where she can snip them with those fingernail scissors there. Oh, she's just working her way around again. All those petals. We don't want to cut any of those off. But if you do, it's okay. We can reattach them later. But there you can see that's the bottom of the daisy cast. Trimming it up a little bit. Now she's going to round those. You can see the cast. Remember she cut it around there and so it's going to have a flat edge. She really didn't cut into the cast. Now she's basically releasing the rest of the petals that are in that cast. The daisies have kind of a rounded end on their petals. So we want to show that. We want to round these. Just a few more and then we'll go to the next step. This is probably the most time consuming part of the whole project is creating the daisy flower sculptures. And like I said, there's four of these, so we'll take some time doing it. Now she's scoring these petals. They are scored on the bottom in the cast, but not on the top. So she's putting a little texture in each petal. And you'll look at your petals and you'll see Those scores in there in the cast. Now she's using the wire end of that burnisher to sort of fold bend these petals down a little bit, giving it a little bit of life. They'll come up a little bit, but there you can see what she's done. She's going to do that with all of those. We're not going to spend the time to show you each one, but I want to give you enough video to get the idea here. Now she's releasing these petals. And you can see you have a number of petals for each of your flower casts. She cuts them down and tears the bottom off and then rounds the top. She doesn't cut that bottom off. She tears it off, which gives you a little bit of a softer end to 
attach it to the flower. Now she's bending it on the ends, folding it on the other end where it'll attach to the flower, making a little bit of a V shape there. Using that burnisher, she folds it in and then rounds the other end. And where it's bending down, that's the bottom of the petal. The top has the texture in the cast. Where it's scored on the top naturally in that cast. So basically that's what you're going to do with all the petals on that sheet. She's got them all cut out there and the petals by each flower. Now she's cutting out the caps to the flowers. You can see them pretty clearly textured on the top. So she cuts around it and then she's going to do an indentation that'll kind of give you a little texture where the petals will go underneath. She, that softens that edge. You, you don't want a hard edge going around there when you add that cap. So there are four of those. One for each daisy. It's by the leaves, by those large leaves there. It'll go on the stems. Now she's doing a little scoring on those leaves where she wants to have a little more veins in the leaves. Now she's going to start adding these flower petals that she cut out. So She's going to wet around the edge of those petals that are on each flower there. Add a little bonding agent there. And now she's adding a little bit of bonding agent to the bottom of the cap. Let it soak in a little bit. And she's going to start adding these petals. And they kind of go in between these other petals that are on the main cast of the flower head there. And she's going to wet each one on both sides and work her way around. She's working it clockwise. Doesn't matter, you can go counterclockwise if you want. She's kind of filling in the petals underneath. They all kind of bend down. So she's going to go all the way around this right on the edge of that center of the cast. She doesn't push them in too far. She just kind of puts them where they meet the other petals. She continues to go around laying layers of petals where she wants them. 
she probably won't use all of these, but she is going to cover that main cast. You'll notice that she's using uh, a pair of tweezers and they're curved at the end. That allows her to see better where she's placing these petals. And you might want to uh, use the same kind of tweezers. You can apply these with your fingers too, but uh, she likes to use the tweezers. Uh, she used her fingers for it. As she progresses with each layer, she gets a little closer to the center of the flower with the petals on the layers. Use the fingers and the tweezers. Working with her right hand and her left hand. Now, she's got it covered as much as she wants and she applies that wet cap right over those petals. She sort of sandwiches those petals between the, the bud at the bottom and the cap there. And it, it really locks them in. They'll never come out of there after it's dry. And I'm going to use her burnisher just to tuck it in a little bit underneath that cap. Doing some adjustment there. And that's a beautiful flower. Bottom and the top. And there she has her first flower, complete, beautiful. And she's going to take that and put it on her drying stand and dry that with the stems. Now she's moving to the next flower, wetting the cast, wetting the cap on the bottom, and applying the petals. Wetting the bottom of each petal. Here she's Putting it on with her fingers. Working her way around in layers. Putting each petal where she wants them. And she's got all four done drying. Now she's going to work on releasing the butterflies and the main large leaves, stem leaves, releasing them all from the cast sheet. She just cuts them free and then she's going to cut around them, starting with the leaves.
now she's cutting around the uh, the leaves with the fingernail scissors. You can see how these scissors work really well for getting into these tight areas on this complicated leaf cast. A lot of little nooks and crannies in there. But she has to work around. You can see it's a pretty good cast there. It's thin like a leaf. Goes in and out, turning that cast that's still embedded in the in the paper there. It's around it. And she's going to release that cast. Mapping her way around. Getting all the little indentations. Taking her time. Turning it. That helps her to get in there. That would be difficult to do with those big Fisker scissors. This is the right tool for this, these little fingernail scissors with the curved end. Now she has that first leaf all cut out and she'll move on to the next ones. Cut out all her leaves. Once she has all the leaves cut out, she's going to start on her butterflies. Okay, now she's releasing this small butterfly. She already cut out the large one. And she's using those curved fingernail scissors again to get around this cast, just like she did the leaves. Getting it completely free of the paper around it. Then she's going to bend it so it looks like it's flying. And there's a large butterfly and all her leaves that she's going to attach to the stem of the flower. Now this is that small little chip. She's going to cut just slivers off of this. These will be the legs of the butterflies. Just trying to get it as thin as she can using the Fiskers, the large scissors. She cuts off the sm short end of that chip and then the long end. Short legs for the little butterfly and long legs for the big butterfly. And then she's going to cut some other just small slivers. She'll practice and get what she wants out of there. These will be the antennae that goes on the head of each butterfly. Trying to get really thin, thin strips of paper out of that chip. Now she's going to wet the bottom of the cast on these butterflies. This is where she's going to attach these legs. She's going to do the big butterfly first. And you can see she's finding the middle, sort of the middle of that body of the butterfly. And she's making an X overlapping these uh, legs. And then she's going to put a third one right across the middle. And she'll adjust these legs later, make it look like it's standing up. 
has a few little torn strips of paper and she's going to wet those and apply those right over the legs that she put down there right over that X with the cross in the middle and using the tip of that tuck tool burnisher the metal in she's going to make sure that those legs are fastened in there that they'll never come out then she'll do that to the next butterfly too but before she does that she's going to finish this by adding the antennae to the uh, head of the large butterfly. Now she picks up an antenna with tip of her burnisher making sure it kind of bends outward. Natural bend of that little paper clipping. She cut it. Okay, now she's starting the small butterfly, doing the same thing, put in next there. One across that X and adding that torn strip of paper wants to tear it about the same length as the body wetting it on both sides and laying it in there with her fingers mm -hmm. and then using the tip of that burnisher to seat it in over those legs forming the, the bottom of the butterfly body where the legs come out and then the antenna she wets the head and puts the antennae on the head and then she's going to dry these butterflies she'll just take those and put them on the drying stand and then she's going to take the dry flowers and stems away while the butterflies dry now she's doing some dry burnishing on these stems finding those little places on here where she's going to attach the branches of the other flowers so she's got it marked there dry burnishing is helpful to get some of those wrinkles out just put a little pressure on there and has it laying on the on the table rolling it over as she burnishes it with the paper into the burnisher this is the bottom end where it goes in the stand she's going to bend this into kind of a zigzag shape where those marks are and the armature the steel armature inside keeps it where she bends it if she bends it too far she can bend it back the paper just bends with it now she's taking uh, scissors and she's kind of snipping away the paper around that wire she only does this on the top, the narrow end. Now she's got her limb stem 
the skinny one, the little thin one, and she's going to measure five inches on that, mark it with her fingernail, and she's taking a needle nose pliers with a dikes on the end of it and she's going to cut through the paper and the wire to segment it. That one's five inches and then the next one's going to be four inches. That gives her three limbs. Cut through that too. And she's going to Take the uh, knife and just thin that paper at the end of that wire on the smaller segment. Takes a flower, uh, you're going to fluff it up a little bit, making it look pretty, separating some of those petals, getting them looking the way she wants them. Now she's got a hole there. That's where that's going to go, that that stem. So she tries it. She's going to bend that a little bit, give it a little life. All of these segments have a thin end and a fatter end, and this thin end is what she's put in the flower. She wet flower and then the stem. Place it in there. Then she takes a narrow strip of paper. She wets that on both sides. Wraps it around the stem where the stem meets the bud of the flower. Chasing it in. That torn paper chases in really nicely. With the metal end of her burnisher. She could use the other end too, but I think this is probably better. And now she has the small stem on. She's going to do the next flower the same way. Adjusting the petals the way she wants them. You can see the first one lying there. A little close up to see how she's readjusting these petals. Sculpting them out the way she wants that flower head to look. And she wet the hole and she wet the stem, seats it in the hole, and tears a little strip of paper and chases that around the stem and the bud underneath of the flower, just like she did the first one. And then she'll do the second one, and then she'll add the uh, the flower to the main stem, which is the zigzagged stem. There she's got that one finished, chasing it out. You see the other three there and the leaves sitting there. Then she can move to the next step, which will be putting the stem in, the main stem in. She's going to uh, add the limbs on now with an awl. 
where the zigzag is, he punches a hole, opens it up a little more with the uh, large awl, and she does that with each bend in the main stem. This is where she's going to uh, put the wires of those limbs on. When she adds those limbs, she'll start with the longest one at the bottom and work her way to the top with the smaller one. She'll cut away a little bit of that paper on each one of these so the wire kind of goes in that hole. Now she's going to attach the first one. This is the longer one. She wets the zag, zigzag and wets the uh, the limb at the bottom and pushes it in that hole. Now, here's a trick that you can do. Take a pen, dressmaker pen, and put it through the limb. You know you got a wire in there, so you gotta work your way around it. Now this will only work if it's thoroughly dry in that on those stems. Otherwise you'll bend the pen. This is one way of doing it. And you'll do that with uh, with all three of them working your way up. So if you just push it through the main stem. You don't want to push it through your finger. So just be careful. You can back it up with some foam board or something, but she's... She's got it there. Then she's going to take a little pad of paper and cover that hole. Chase it in with her burnisher. She'll turn it around and she'll put another pad on the other side and and when that dries, it's on there. It's not com coming off. Now, that's one way of doing it. Um, she's not going to do it that way. She's just going to lay it down without the pens on the... Uh, on the surface of her table and uh, put the paper on there and and work it this way. You can do it this way as well. It uh, It's up to you. It um, requires a little more gentle handling and you won't have it in the sculpture stand when you do this. But once you have paper around there, it it stays uh, pretty firm. She's opening up the, the hole again at the top bend. And she's putting these uh, limbs where she wants them. Once once it's dry too, you can uh, you can adjust these the way you want. The, the wire armature in there really allows you to do a lot of flexing. Trimming off the bottom of that longer limb there and 
shifting the paper around it a little bit, finding a place where she wants it on that top bend of the main stem. A lot of repetition in doing this, but that's nature, right? She decided to put the four inch stem on the top and the three inch down below. Now she uh, wrapping more paper around that joint, getting it firmed up there. And she did the last one. Getting it all finished up. Now she's going to take a little piece of her paper and she's going to cut kind of a teardrop shape. These will be tiny little leaves. And she's just eyeballing these. Um, you see she has the torn edge at the bottom of that teardrop. That's where she'll chase it on. So she's using those fingernail scissors to cut these out. And she's going to cut out eight of these. probably about a half inch long and uh, all shaped kind of the same way. Sort of counting them. She's going to put one on each side of the stem and locations to her choosing. Bends those with the end of the burnisher as well. And she adds a little bit of bonding agent. I guess about two inches from the top of that flower. She's going to put it on, chase it onto the stem. These are the tiny little leaves. These are hand sculpted out of the soft paper, but she'll use the cast leaves and add those too. But she's going to wait, make sure everything's dry before she does that. Here you can see as we move forward a little bit, the, the places where she's adding all these little leaves. Now the bonding agent is acid free and totally harmless. It's a little dried on her fingers and you can see that there but a little hand cream will keep her fingers from and her hands from drying out afterwards. She adds them near the top of each limb, just under the flower, and chasing them on. Now she's going to take this whole thing and she's going to lay it on a board and she's going to dry this. She has to handle it carefully because it's all wet. But if it's pinned, she can, you can dry it in your drying stand. Now, she's got the butterflies dry, and she's got the uh, 
the flower stems and that whole sculpture dry and she can start burnishing and she wets those joints where they came together where they're still a little rough adding a little bonding agent there softens it so she can do some burnishing smoothing it the way it'll look natural making it look a little smaller there take away the horsiness around all those joints there by working that tuck toe burnisher in there and, and smoothing it taking down that paper a little bit She's got that all done and now um, she's kind of moving those around a little bit, those those limbs, getting shaping it the way she wants it. That wire in there, it really allows you a lot of flexibility to do this. And she's going to take it and put it in the sculpture stand. If you don't like how loose it is at the bottom, just add some paper to that stem, fatten it up a little bit. Now she's taking the uh, butterflies and she's adding those to the uh, the heads of the flowers. She's got the legs all bent the way she wants those. She wets the head of the flower and the bottom of the feet and sticks it on there. Because the bonding agent is in that paper it sticks pretty well. Here you can see how she's she makes those uh, legs where she wants them. She already had done this to the little butterfly. With her tweezers, she bends those legs up. Kind of finds where the feet are. With the tweezers and uh, shapes them down. Legs it kind of makes makes little joints in there. You see she got little feet on there and she got them all together. Kind of cute, and then she's um, trying to get them kind of the same length on there, and she paint those feet with a little bit of bonding agent and finds where she wants to place it on the sculpture. Finds the. flower she wants, put it on the top there, turns it the way she wants it, sets it in there just gingerly, and when that dries it's not coming off of there. It's bonding agent in the legs and in the head of that flower, and it sticks hard. Now she's going to place the large leaves where she wants those on the stems. 
So she's bending it a little bit. There's a little notch there. You see, that'll fit right on the limbs. Put them around that joint there. So she takes an X-Acto knife and she makes just a little slice on both sides of that stem right there at the joint. Just under that V where the two limbs are. Kind of bends the paper down a little bit. Do the one side and then the other side. Then she's going to wet that little slice. She puts a pin also, dressmaker pin on either side of the slice upward. So when she puts that leaf on, it'll rest against the pin and the notch of the leaf will go in those slices. And she wets the leaf too at the notch. Again, that paper, when it dries, it's, it's on there. See how the leaf rests on that pen. You can see how the sculpture kind of turns inside that tube. If you don't like that, like I said, just add a little paper there. Now she's going to do the next one. You might want to do all this prep work ahead of time and just do all your notches and putting your pins in and then just setting the leaves in place. You might not be as steady as Patty is. She's done this a lot, so she's just working her way up. I would probably do it the other way. I'm I'm one that likes to get things prepared all the way ahead of time and then do that do it in steps a little more repetitively. She's got one notch there and and she's doing a leaf there. I guess she's not going to do one on the other side. We'll see. Working on the top. She's really very, very gentle the way she's doing this. She likes to shape those leaves a little bit before she puts them on. I guess she's doing it her way. You do it the way you feel the most comfortable. That's what I do. There's no rules here. There's no... right or wrong way.
I guess you could also look at a daisy and see how that looks. She lost that leaf there on the bottom. Just put it right back on. And then she has one more leaf to add to pin in. And she'll add that last leaf after she bends it. She puts bonding agent on that slice and on the leaf and places it there. She's finished. Beautiful. She'll let that dry just the way it is, the way it's sitting there. Lost the leaf again. There it is. <laughs> Lost another leaf. You can see you can't mess with it too much. They'll fall off. But just get it the way you want it and let it set and dry. And once it's dry, you're finished. Good job, Patty. Okay, she let that dry overnight. Now she's just got to take the pins out and kind of shape the limbs where she wants them finally. Now, there's going to be a pinhole there. So you want to take care of that. You don't want to have pinholes in your in your stems. So all you have to do is take a little bonding agent and put it where that pinhole is and It'll kind of close up, it'll absorb that moisture, close up a little bit, and then you can rub it with your burnisher, and it'll, it'll seal that hole, and no one's going to see it. You see, she pulled it out of that sculpture stand, and she can handle that thing just like a real flower, it's not it's not as fragile as it looks. And the leaves don't fall out now. There it is. Now she's really finished with it. As soon as she's done fussing with the Leave some more, making them the way she wants. And this is art, so you do what you want with your sculptures. Um, you fuss with them a little bit like she's doing, and sometimes it's just hard to finish. Hard to say, I'm done. But I think that's where she's at. I think she's done. Beautiful. Good job, Patty. I hope you enjoyed this video and watching us and how we work. That's the nice thing about this sculpture stand. You can rotate your flower in there. 
without rotating the whole stand and you can check it out all the way around. That's the way sculpture is. It's three-dimensional so you can view it in the round. And there it is. Daisies and butterflies. If you want to order Go to our website at ekmanfineart.com and click here on Ekman Method. Go down to Kits here, click. There's all of our learning kits. And there's the rose and the daisy bundle. And up here is the daisy deluxe kit and basic kits. If you'd like to frame your daisy and butterflies, Go to shop and to supplies, click there and you can see all the supplies and there are also the kits. And you can go down to this beautiful acrylic box that the roses in, Daisy fits in the same box. Just remember our prices can change without notice.